Hi there, I'm Beth, and today I'll be making an entire custom Blythe doll. I'll be making clothes, shoes, and accessories, as well as carving and repainting the face, painting the back plate, and giving her a haircut. Her concept started with a colour palette of greens and pinks, and in particular this special fabric, which I'd printed out myself when I was trying out different DIY custom fabric techniques. I love the quirky dodo carousel detail, and laid out the template pieces from my bib front dress pattern to make the most of the little that I had. I started putting together the dress using a plain pink cotton for the bib, collar and sleeves. I included some cream lace details on the bodice and sleeves, and a lace trim on the skirt. I added a long straight sleeve to the short puff sleeve to create more interest. I sewed on some little star-shaped buttons to the bodice, and a lace bow with some beads on the skirt. My idea for this doll's outfit is kind of a vintage circus style, with weathering and staining on the clothes and accessories. I use the same pastel dust that I use for doing face-ups, and a soft brush, to firmly rub the pigment into the fabric. I would try misting this with water, but since it's a home printed fabric, I'm not convinced that it's very water fast. I really love the aged look this gives the dress. I love to see doll clothes with some wear and tear added. Here I've made some bloomers with lace detail, elastic gathered cuffs and waist, and with a snap fastening. I give it the same aging treatment, this time with a spritz of water, and it works really nicely again to add that vintage look. I then whipped up some long lace trimmed socks and a hair clip using the striped facing fabric too. Next, I made a pair of boots for my custom doll, using this pale blue, slightly green, recycled leather. I transfer my self-made template markings and stitching holes and add rivets and eyelets too. I think I always wanted to be a shoemaker for the elves since reading that story as a child.
I use saddle stitch and two needles to join all the pieces and later use my clay shoe lasts to wet form and shape the leather toes. Once dry, I trim the excess from the soles and treat the raw edges with tokenol cream. Using the same techniques, I make a matching crossbody bag. I also created this pattern myself and added a magnet to fastening so it can be functional. Since my base doll has small feet, I make a pair of extra socks to add an extra layer of texture and colour and also help the shoes fit snugly. I also knitted this cardigan for her. I'm really enjoying this colour palette. I use diluted fabric paints to add weathering to the boots and the handbag. I also use paint to highlight this cool logo stamped leather tag, then I turn it into a keyring to add to her package. I do a little test fit of everything together and I'm absolutely loving the vibe of her already. I think it's wonderful to have clothing options for a custom doll and sketched designs for a second dress that will also fit her colour theme. I add pin tucks to a pink cotton bodice and skirt and fold and gather a teal trim. I add narrow lace to the folds of the bodice and skirt I gather the skirt and use white cotton to fully line the bodice. I sew straight across the sides here, connecting the lining and facing fabric, and it gives a super neat join perfect for sleeveless dresses. I left a little open at the bottom so I can easily join the skirt. Then I tuck in and hand stitch the lining, hiding all the raw edges inside. I close up the back of the skirt and sit down to sew on some snap fastenings. Again, I add pastel and water weathering to the dress, and I think it makes a lovely set again, paired with the cardigan. In my concept sketch, I drew a neck ruff. So I created one using a peachy pink lace and added a ribbon fastening. Oh goodness, so cute! 
I found real silk ribbon in my stash the perfect colour, so I added a waistband with bow to the dress too. I even added a bow to the handbag. I put everything together on one of our 3D printed mannequin dress forms and I really love it. Okay, here's all the things that will go with my custom doll. Now I just need the doll. Here she is. As you can probably tell, her whole colour scheme came from her hair colour. She's an AliExpress fake blithe, sometimes labelled a Basak doll. Her body imitates the stock blithe type, but has added articulation in the arms. I open up her head and take her apart. Her scalp lifts off easily and I will add a second cord to replace this spring. I bought a new eye mechanism for her, so I wouldn't have to pull out the existing eye chips. Laziness or genius? I will prepare her face as I always do, with very fine grit sandpaper, removing the glossy finish. Everything's sanded and washed that I intend to paint on. I've got boiled water here that I'm soaking the eyelids in. I'm hoping to loosen the glue and pull them out, but we'll soon find that's quite impossible. I turn to the scalpel and start cutting them out. All this does is leave behind half the lashes, so I end up grinding and cutting off the inside section of the lid. A little extreme perhaps, but then I can properly and securely add new eyelashes. With a pencil, I sketch some crease lines above the eyes that I will carve in. This is a detail I've admired on some other people's dolls and I wanted to try it out. I mark out other areas I plan to carve and get my tools. I like to use both a rotary tool and hand tools when sculpting, and I'm always refining my process. I've still so much to learn. I carve the eye creases and widen the upper eye hole to give the lids more clearance. Often they will catch on the faceplate if they have layers of paint and varnish added to them. Here's one of my hand tools, a wood carving bit. I like the curved and V-shaped ones. I stop often and wipe away debris with a melamine sponge or magic eraser. I really like these little under eye shapes too. It's just more detail and realism for her cute face. I start defining the nose and mouth next, jumping around and trying to follow my sketched lines. I like to use a pin vise handle to hold my grinding bits with when I want more control in small areas. I add definition to her nostrils, 
and work on the detail around the middle of the mouth. Here's her progress so far, still some work to do. After some more tweaks, I sand her thoroughly and wash her face. I then spray her pieces with a few coats of Mr Super Clear to prepare the surfaces for painting. I also airbrush a light blushing colour to the face. I look out my supplies and decide to sketch out a plan of sorts for fun on my iPad. I'll add some of her hair colour to the eyebrows and swirls on the lids and I plan a dodo carousel character from her dress fabric too for the back plate. I use a watercolour pencil to decorate the back plate with extra layers of MSC to help build up the saturation and protect it afterwards. As you can see here, I'll be naming her Mint Carousel. I start drawing her eyelid designs, then I want to try out another new art supply I was given on my birthday, some pan pastels. Wow! They really are very fine and very pigmented. I can see why so many people use them for dolls. I add colour layer by layer with MSC in between and eventually block in the eyebrows using a kneaded putty eraser to erase and shape the outline. Once spray coated again, I start drawing in fine hairs with pencils using different colours to add interesting detail. I wanted to give her some nice eyeliner too, but I didn't want to use black as it seemed too harsh for her soft vintage look, so I used brown instead. Here I'm using watercolour paint to flick freckles and blemishes onto her face. I used turquoise and browns too. I love how much life this adds to a doll. Here are her painted headpieces. I stuck to the greens and yellows from the fabric design to go with her pink skin. I will complete her eyes using these special brown eyelashes cut to size. I will also add these custom eye chips. I made three of these sets myself. Finally, I'll add some beads and charms to her pull strings. And here she is! I've given her forward and side-facing bluey green eyes, forward-facing lilac eyes and beautiful brown side eyes. Her pool strings are decorated simply with peachy pink and yellow colours. She's coming together really nicely. Now the only thing left to sort out is her hair. I'll give her a cut with some feathering and trim the fringe so we can see more of her face. Here she is! Isn't that so much better? She didn't have crazy long hair before, but I wasn't a fan of the choppy cut. Let's get her acquainted with all her new things then. Here's her underwear. Let's see her in this sleeveless dress first. Aww, it's the perfect length to peek at her frilly bloomers. And with the cardigan. And 
and then the neck ruff. Oh wow, that's lovely. Let's add the hair clip and her shoes. Oh yes, I love the second pair of socks. The texture and colour really appeal to me. Oh, and I also knitted this little scarf, which I'm now thinking could make a cute headband too. What do you think of this outfit? Is it missing anything? I think each of her eyes look lovely with it. Oh, she could also wear her bag. Let's see her other dress. Here I've added her bag, and I just adore this look too. Do you have a favourite? I feel like this is her signature dress, with the dodo bird carousel going around around the hem of her skirt. I would love to see her in a circus setting, wouldn't that be fun? Oh, and I tried out another way to wear the scarf and bow here. Lovely. Well, as planned, my mint carousel will be going up for sale on my website soon. So if you've also fallen in love with her, she could be yours. She'll travel safely boxed and wrapped up in this padded sleeping bag too. She will be available with all of the clothes, extras and accessories you've seen me make here this Sunday the 5th of March at 6pm GMT UK time. So set a reminder if you're interested and head to bethramsden.com to see her photos and information then. She is such a beauty. I do hope someone will want to take her home. I hope to be able to regularly create and offer dolls for sale as I simply can't keep them all for myself. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to replying to all of your comments and seeing what you think of her. Until next time, take care. Bye.